There are a few days when I uh, am at home in the evenings that I sit in my chair and watch out of the window and look at the, the sky before me. And every once in a way, the place where light is giving way to darkness, that period that we call twilight, has this beautiful array of just wonderful colors. All the colors, violet, indigo, blue, yellow, green, orange, red, all of them come together in amazing hues that paint such a pretty picture. I've seen many pictures that try to capture the beauty of this picture, but when you look at it in the sky, it's so very beautiful. And I was thinking today, uh, yesterday as I was working my way through the Christmas story, I wonder whether it was like this on that slope of Bethlehem where the shepherds were, as they tended their flocks, as they went and put the sheep back in the pens and locked the gates and made sure that everything was okay, and whether they settled down on that slope, other shepherds came together, they built a fire, and then they looked out on this beautiful landscape, and I wonder whether as they talked about maybe missing family since they were out there all the time, or even complaining about a mischievous sheep that had wandered away and they had to go running after and bring it back. I wonder whether it was into that kind of a scene that Luke tells us that the angel of the Lord came upon them and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this, this shall be a sign unto you. You will find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly, listen to this, and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill to men. Can you imagine that? A heavenly host singing to shepherds. These shepherds would never have been able to buy a ticket to an opera house to see anything, go to any place where they could have heard a decent choir. Their sense of music ended with the buying of sheep. And here, here they were, listening to an angelic chorus singing glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace, goodwill to all men. You know, beloved, it was this moment in time when all of these events took place that God's incredible love for each of us kind of came to a point. For God so loved the world, you and me, that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have eternal life. It came together, this intangible love was found tangible in the birth of Jesus. God's love, a love that will never let us go, a love that came down from heaven for humanity. And even though this was the the pinpoint or the point where this love kind of took shape and form. God had been planning this for a long time. Even in the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve fell and they chose to follow or not follow what God had told them. Even then, 
the Bible tells us that there was a promise for deliverance, for a savior, that the seed of the woman would bruise the head of the serpent. And then Abraham, the promise was given that through his descendants, all the nations of the world would be blessed. And then to Moses, Moses told the people that there would come somebody who was a greater lawgiver than himself. And then a, a prophet or a seer outside of Israel caught in raptures with a vision that he saw and he proclaims, there shall come a star out of Jacob and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. And then prophets, prophets declared that the desire of the nations would come and that his name would be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father and the Prince of Peace. And if these were vague predictions and pronunciations, there came even more specific ones that out of the line of the tribe of Judah, the line of David, would be born in Bethlehem and that his coming would be preceded by one who would preach a gospel of repentance. In the fullness of time, Galatians 4.4 4 says that, in the fullness of time, God sent forth his son. Do you know what fullness means? It means kairos time. There are two words in the Greek that talk about time. Kairos and chronos. Chronos is what we carry on our wrists, a chronometer, chronometer that tells us time, 24 hours, seven days, those kind of things. Kairos time is when God breaks into our world. God breaks into each one of us and wants to do a wonderful and new thing. And this, beloved, was Kairos time. In the fullness of time, God gave his son to us. This fullness of time even extended into history. Because we look at history, we look at Alexander the Great and the wonderful conquest that he made and how he brought all the regions around that together. But the one thing that emanated from Alexander the Great was a common language. Greek became Koine Greek or the language of the marketplace which is what the Bible uses in the New Testament, Koine Greek. That became the language that was spoken everywhere, a kind of a universal language that enabled everybody to talk about Jesus the Messiah. Not only that, with the rise of the Roman Empire, the Romans brought peace to all the ter territories around, all the nations that came under them. And they built roads that enabled the messengers of the gospel to go in all directions. Kairos time, God's time. It was almost like God even stopped a star and said, hang right there because I have a job even for you. There are going to be wise men who need you for directions. God's time, Kairos time, anointed, appointed time. And it was Kairos time for Joseph and Mary. Mary acquiesced to God's will. Joseph did the unthinkable in taking Mary to be his wife. And in census filled Jerusalem, Bethlehem, they even found a small enough place for Jesus to be born. I'm sure that Mary must have looked around in great astonishment at all these four-legged midwives who were expected to help with the birth. But even there, a place was found. Kairos time. You know, if we are to truly understand the import 
of what happened that night, we need to look at each of these protagonists. We need to look at Mary, Joseph, the shepherds, the wise men, and see what went on with them and how they responded. Take Mary, for example. God wanted to do something in and through Mary. Mary didn't have to do anything. Nothing. All God was asking was if Mary would be available. He was asking for her obedience and her willingness. How can this be? Don't worry, Mary. I've got it. I've got it. I've got it under control. All I ask from you is willingness and obedience. Will you provide yourself to be the vessel? Mary's response was, let it be done unto me. Let it be done unto me. I wonder, beloved, what our response would be because I don't think God's stopped with Mary. He continues to want to do things in and through us. He continues to knock at our heart's door and say, will you just let me do what I want to do in you and through you? You don't have to do anything. Will you let me? What are things that God could be asking, beloved? He could be asking to be born in our hearts today, isn't it? Will you let me be your savior? Or maybe he's asking that you would let the Holy Spirit be given free reign in your heart and in your life. Or maybe today he just wants to break shackles things that are holding you down, that have held you down for a long, long time. And maybe he's saying, I can do it. Maybe he wants to turn your mourning into dancing. Maybe he wants to take your heavy burden from you and give you a light yoke. That's what he promises, isn't it, beloved? And maybe today you've come in here heavy, it's something you're carrying in. Maybe he's asking you whether you'll allow him to do a wonder in your life and take that burden off of you. Maybe he just wants to let you know that in your weakness, his strength will be made perfect. Maybe you've been crying out to him saying, Lord, I have nothing left in me. Nothing. I'm dry. And I can't do it, Lord. I can't go any further. And the amazing thing is, even in that place, God comes alongside of us and says, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Because I've got you. I've got you. I have strength that is way beyond your imagination that I can pour into this area of weakness and make it something beautiful. I wonder today whether you are feeling that way. That things are just dry and empty. And even amidst all that's going on, you're saying, Lord, I, I don't know. I don't have it. And maybe God's saying, just be willing to accept. I'll take you. Mary gave in to what God wanted to do. Let it be done to me. She said, I wonder if that can be our response. But take Joseph. Take Joseph. Sometimes I wonder whether Joseph even understood all the implications of what he was asked to do. Take Mary to be your wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. Wait, something's conceived in her? What are you talking about? How am I to go forward with something like that? She's carrying a child, it's not mine. 
the law would require her to be stoned and yet the word was take mary to be your wife for that which is conceived in her is of the holy ghost and he did he did going against every tradition or every uh, thing that the family expectations that the families would have had he took mary to be his wife when everything must have been confusing none of it made sense to him and beloved there are times in our lives when all the math that we do doesn't add up to the plan that god has for us doesn't add up we do all the analysis and god says i want you to do something and we say wait lord i need to have this figured out i need to know a to b to c to d i need to have a plan and god reminds us in his word that my thoughts are way higher than yours you're never going to be able to think the way i think never and you know every time i have read that verse it brings a sense of consolation and comfort to me because i would i would hate to give my life over to somebody who had the same kind of intelligence that i had i wouldn't want to i would want to hand over my life to someone who was infinitely wiser than i am somebody who knew far more than i do somebody who always knew the big picture and where i fit in that picture somebody who knew how the end would come what would be the end of the book that has my writing in it i want to give my life to that kind of a somebody and it is that somebody who told joseph joseph do this it won't make sense to you but do it because i have a plan and maybe today god is saying to you stop trying to calculate stop trying to analyze stop trying to understand this before you take the first move trust me trust me for my thoughts are way way higher than yours and i know what i'm doing i know what i'm doing wonder whether some of us need to just open our hands and say okay lord i don't understand but i'm going to say yes because i trust you and then think of those shepherds on the slopes of bethlehem when they heard the news they said to one another let us go to bethlehem you say wait a minute shepherds you have a responsibility here right you're supposed to be sitting around with sheep they must have looked at the sheep and hmm did you lock the gate yeah, i did how about you yeah i did too let's go we just heard this heavenly chorus there's something divine that is happening let's not let this thing stop us let's go there's something exciting that god is doing and we need to be in the midst of it because you will find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes implicit within all that was said to them was the understanding that they would indeed go and they went here's a scenario for you do you find yourself or do you find yourselves in places where you're doing something day in and day out and it's just the same every morning you get up and you do the same thing over and over again through the week through the month 365 days it's like a just your honor a wheel helen reddy used to sing a song by mentioning her it dates me as well but she used to sing a song that said stop the world and let me off i'm tired of going round and round do you ever feel like that that the routine of the day is just eating into you 
It's taken away all the excitement, all the joy. It's just something you do, plod through every day. And I think God kind of, and I think this is how God works. God decided to surprise the shepherds. He said, let me give you something that's going to just blow the socks off you. Okay? I'm going to send this message to you and then an angelic chorus and then I'm going to send you to see a baby born in Bethlehem. And all oh, how they went. They went and found him. Here's the thing, beloved. Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and have it in abundance. Am I right? Ask yourself whether you're living the abundant life. Ask yourself whether it's the abundant life that you have or the everyday, day in, day out routine that has sucked the excitement and joy from your life. And now, think about something that you always wanted to do. Maybe today God is saying, I have excitement for you. If you'll just move, if you'll just go, I'll take care of things. But I have this exciting thing. And maybe it is to just take 10 days and go and do something that you wanted to do all your life. Maybe it's just that. You've always thought, gosh, I can't take leave. I can't do this. I can't go out. What will happen to this or that? And maybe, maybe God is saying, go. And I need to be careful here because I'm giving you examples and maybe one or two of you may walk out and say, I'm going to buy a ticket and go <laughs> hear the Lord first. <laughs> or maybe God is just saying, you know, plan that trip to Israel that you've been talking about for so long. Wait till the war is over, but then plan it. You know? I met up with a cousin. He lives in, in San Ramon. And he was one who went to work, clockwork, every day, came back in the evening, would have his supper, and then watch a little TV, go to bed. He was... And then... He, he always had a love for carpentry, to just make things. And this time when I went to his house, I found his garage transformed into a little shop. He had all the tools. And then he showed me a table in the living room that he had made. I, I tell you, it could have come from any store. It was so beautifully done. And then out things in the garden, on the patio, things he had made. He said, I stopped thinking when I, you know, finally can do this. I just said, I'm going to start. This is something that has been burning in my heart for so long. I want to do this thing. I'm going to start doing it. And he did. And there's so much of passion and excitement. And maybe there's something in you that you've been wanting to do for a long, long time. And yet you keep pushing it away thinking, no, no, I've got to do this. I've got to go to work and do this and do this. Maybe you can do it together, but... Take the first step. The waters parted when they took the first step. Right? When I get to heaven, I want to meet the two guys who put their feet into the water. First, ask them what went through their hearts at that time. Were you scared? And yet the Red Sea parted only when they put their feet into the water. And maybe it's time to take that step of faith. The shepherd said one to another, let us go and see this thing which the angel has said. And they hastened to Bethlehem. Then beloved, the wise men followed a star. Have you ever looked at the canopy of stars and thought, how on earth did they do that? Right? How did they do that? And yet they were willing to commit to the journey. Here's they, not, not only did they commit to the journey, they committed to the thought that they would meet this king. They committed to the end of the journey. They knew that they will not relent till they found him because they carried gifts with them. And when they found him, they fell down and worshipped him. 
fell down and worshiped him and i think on this christmas day as we just remember the birth of jesus and the opportunities we have to to worship him to be able to say lord i recognize you as king of kings in my life and i will worship you not just here on a sunday no worship as it was written in the latin vulgate quorum dei which means i'm always in a state of worship whatever i'm doing wherever i am i'm worshiping it work as i travel i'm in worship of god i think that's the awe for him that we need to recapture so beloved as we look at god's plan to take us from the garden of eden the fall to that wonderful banquet the feast of the lamb one day in the interim maybe he's telling us will you be just obedient and willing for all that i want to do in and through you will you take that step even if you don't understand would you trust me would you be willing to look for the exciting things that i have in store for you and then i like this and i'd like to end here because it says of the shepherds as they closed after seeing him that is they came and saw jesus it says the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child they told everyone and all who heard the shepherd's story were astonished how about getting astonishment out into the world how about that and the way to do it is to tell the story to tell the story of the birth of jesus and its import and importance for all of history is a beautiful hymn and i close with this that ernest nickel wrote it it goes like this we were story to tell to the nations that shall turn their hearts to the right a story of truth and mercy a story of peace and light we were song to be sung to the nations that shall lift their hearts to the lord a song that shall conquer evil and shatter the spear and sword we were message to give to the nations that the lord who reigneth above has sent us his son to save us and show us that god is love we were savior to show to the nations who the path of sorrow has tread trod that all of the world's great peoples may come to the truth of god for the darkness shall turn to dawning and the dawning to noonday bright and christ's great kingdom shall come on earth the kingdom of love and light kairos time beloved god's time god's appointed time let's pray heavenly father each time we go through all that happened on that we are reminded of your incredible great love for us and lord we pray that today as we look at mary and joseph and the shepherds and the wise men and what they went through and how they came to the decisions they made that we would be inspired to trust you to depend upon you to know that you have us and that you love us beyond anything lord i pray that as we come to this your table and remember that the babe 
in the manger. Grow up to live a life and be an example of integrity and sinlessness and holiness. And then to take the cross and take our penalty upon him so that we can be with you. Help us as we come to come knowing how much it cost you, but to come rejoicing at the opportunity that you have given us to be with you. Lord Jesus, in your name we pray. Amen.